Institute for Business Intelligence Conference that is organized by the Information Systems Engineering uh, Department at uh, Ben Gurion University. Um, I would like to uh, invite uh, Professor Dan Bloomberg, the Deputy Vice President of uh, Ben Gurion University and Dean uh, for Research and Development, to open the conference. Dan, please. Good morning, welcome. Uh, I guess the last people are finishing their morning coffee and slowly coming in. Uh, as uh, Professor Shapiro mentioned, I'm Deputy Vice President and Dean for Research and Development. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, the President is abroad, would have liked to come, so I'm apologizing on behalf of Professor Rifka Kalmi that she couldn't be here this morning. Uh, but personally, I'm happy to be here. I would have liked to be here the whole day, and I'll say a word about that later. But um, we're opening a conference that is actually uh, a milestone within a lot of the efforts here at Ben Gurion University to develop our programs, our various programs, in computer sciences, information sciences, uh, communication engineering, and I can go on and on and uh, list the various uh, programs that we have here at BGU. For those of you who are here for the uh, first time, or even not the first time, but don't know a lot about BGU, I should say a few words very quickly, very briefly about BGU. We are established in 1969. We currently have 20,000 students of those. 6,000 are graduate students, uh, and as management, we try to look deep in the last year uh, and see which programs are the programs in which we have extremely strong faculty members, students, programs that really are worth um, promoting and pushing forward, and anything related to <coughs> computer sciences, communication, cyber security, we can actually see that we have an extremely strong program here at BGU. We have several other programs, robotics, I can list many more, um, energy, and obviously I can go with the humanities and social sciences and list them. But this meeting here on uh, data mining and business intelligence is indeed a milestone and we hope that this will be the opening of a series of conferences. <clears throat> the concept of big data and data mining is a relatively new field. And this is where it becomes personal. I said that personally, I'm happy to be here. When you look back at uh, where this concept started, it started in a field that's actually close to myself. I am a, for those of you who don't know, my background is planetary geology pretty far away from big data and computer sciences. But uh, the beginning, if you look back, the beginning of big data started with the collection of astronomical data and planetary data, which was way too immense to analyze. And I'd like to mention a couple of milestones. The first milestone is the Apollo mission. 1969 landing on the moon. I don't know how many of you know how much memory there was on Apollo, but the navigation computer had 2K, much less than uh, most of our watches have nowadays, let alone our iPhones and our uh, Blackberries and so on. Um, another personal milestone is 1992, and now I'm giving away a little bit about my own history. 1992. I was a grad student in Arizona, and I had to analyze Magellan data from Venus, collected by synthetic aperture radar. I had to get a special permit from the NASA director, NASA administrator, to purchase a four gigabyte hard drive. That was a special permission that I had to get. And um, a much more important milestone is that currently a new telescope, a new space telescope, is being built. It should be available 2024. 
But the first challenge that they have with this new telescope is actually the data collection. And IBM, sorry, Omar, that I'm mentioning IBM as uh, part of this milestone. I used to work there. I know. <laughs> That's why. Um, anyhow, um, if you look through the news in the last few weeks, IBM and Astron, which is the uh, Dutch Astronomical <laughs> Observatory uh, organization, are challenged uh, in developing a computer that will be able to handle the collection of data every night that is double the amount of data transferring across the network daily nowadays. So they have to develop the mechanism. And that's where big data comes in. How do you actually deal with these immense amounts of data? Uh, big data feeds into our lives daily, be it business development, business intelligence, uh, looking through the network, searching, but we also expect it to translate into new science and new discoveries in science because for the first time we're developing not only the mechanism to collect the data and store the data, but also the algorithms to actually explore the data and turn them from numbers into actual knowledge when you have so much data. It came because of a few uh, changes in our lives. First of all, the number of sensors available. You know, everything we do is now sensed. Our iPhones have become sensors. They know where we are every second. That data is being gathered somewhere, somehow. No one knows how that will be analyzed in the future. But that is data that's being collected. Same goes for weather stations. Each one of our phones is becoming a little weather station moving with us. Um, the other issue is conversion of analog data into digital data. And people are going and scanning old libraries, old books, uh, old information, turning them into digital data. How do you actually not only store that, but uh, develop the mechanisms to explore it, to search through it, to analyze the information? The width. Uh, the bandwidth that we have nowadays, and anyone who watches TV in Israel in the evenings can see the commercials that we're all going at home to 100 uh, uh, megabyte uh, bandwidths. First of all, I'm not sure we're all going to it in one day, but uh, that's another issue. But the bandwidth is increasing. Uh, the ability to do parallel processing is developing rapidly, and I can tell you my own child is dealing with uh, parallel processing at school now. Most of our faculty members don't know what parallel processing is, but kids are doing that, and that's going to be available to analyze all of, these, all of this data. And the last is machine learning, and that connects, I think, this day to the big picture of collecting all that information, how do you analyze it, that's where machine learning comes in. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot during this day, this day. I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone, to thank the Dean of Engineering, who will be talking in a moment, to thank Olna Billy, who is a great friend of Ben Gurion University, for being with us this morning, for uh, being um, a motor, an engine, a driver, behind the advanced technology park that's being developed here next to us. I'm sure you'll say a couple of words about that in a moment. Um, and I want to thank the organizers, Professor Bacha Shapira, Professor Malplast, uh, and I know that there are a few others around here. Leo Okach, um, everyone that was involved. I'm sure that I also have to thank Judith. I'm not sure that she's here. But she, no, she didn't have anything to do with this event. In any case, I'll thank her because she does a lot for us daily. Uh, everyone, thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day. I apologize that I'll leave in a moment, but I will come back later. The President's abroad, so I have to do a few other things today. Good luck. Thank you.